Good morning. Oh, sorry. My, my name is Debbie Jarvis, and I'm your worship leader this morning, and I want to welcome you to Wesley Knox's in-person and in Zoom, uh, on Zoom uh, morning service. Um, first of all, the first announcement I want to make is that the lovely flowers that are here in front of us this morning are in celebration of Harry and Karen's anniversary. So if you see them later today, wish them a happy anniversary. Um, a reminder to people that received a printed newsletter, your copy is always on the table at the east side of the sanctuary, and any visitors can also pick up one at the same location. Um, I have a couple of announcements from the United Church Women first, and then if there's anybody else other than Trevor uh, that needs to come forward, please make your way down. Um, dads, you know, in a couple of weeks we have to celebrate dads and fathers and grandfathers. Uh, so what's a better thing to, than to give dad a gift of ice cream and strawberries? So the UCW ladies are putting on a fundraiser on June the 19th after church of strawberries and ice cream, and the tickets are only $5 a person, and there would be discounts for families as well. Um, on a different note, uh, we wanted to tell you that there will be a memorial service held uh, here on June 9th, 18th at 11 a.m. for our dear friend, Jean Provo, who passed away recently, for all of you that want, or for all of you that want to uh, attend. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Trevor Johnson. I'm the vice chair of your leadership council, and I'm here actually with a couple of announcements, wearing two different hats. Um, First off, uh, I'm filling in for John McFall today uh, to make the second of the congregational meeting announcements. I'm just gonna read the announcement to you. The ministerial search committee has found a person who they consider to be highly suitable to be called as the next minister of Wesley Knox. The committee has requested that a congregational meeting be held as soon as possible in order that they can present the recommendation to the congregation for their approval. To accommodate this, Leadership Council is calling for a congregational meeting to be held on Sunday, June 12th, following the morning worship service. The purpose of the meeting is to vote on a call for a new minister for Wesley Knox. The search committee will present information about the person being recommended for the call and make a motion to be discussed and voted on by the congregation. All members, full members and adherents are encouraged to attend and participate in this very important event in the life of Wesley Knox. Childcare will be provided. Um, and uh, Margaret, I just realized this uh, as I was reading the announcement, we were talking about whether or not uh, the meeting would be Zoomed, uh, and this next part pertains to that. The United Church of Canada encourages congregations to organize congregational meetings with in-person attendance. This allows the spirit to flow and discernment to happen in a way which voting by proxy and attending by Zoom discourages. To this end, there will be no Zoom capability set up. The United Church does not permit proxy voting for congregational meetings. Please make this meeting a priority as it will have a lasting impact here at Wesley Knox. And that message is from Mary Lynn McNeil, the chair of the Minister Search Committee, and John McFall, chair of the Leadership Council. The second announcement that I wanted to make was that I am your uh, library volunteer today, uh, and I just wanted to uh, draw your attention to the fact that we do have a library display down in the social hall each Sunday, uh, and there are a variety of books uh, that you can peruse, including this week's uh, feature book called Freeing Jesus, uh, by Diana Butler Bass and a number of guys here at uh, Wesley Knox took part in a video uh, study uh, this spring that featured this book uh, as one of the two books that we talked about and uh, certainly is provocative and interesting reading so I can highly recommend the material. Uh, so if you're interested in that or any of the other selections that we have please see me after church. Thank you. Morning. This morning, as we gather, we acknowledge the lands that we are on. We acknowledge the Nunakwaak, Arawan, Nanashnabek people, 
as we do every Sunday, especially on this Sunday, the first Sunday of June, which is National Indigenous History Month. We also gather to light the Christ candle to remind us that Christ is here with us as we worship. Please stand for our call to worship as printed in your bulletin. The Holy One calls our sons and daughters in prophecy. We become ready, ready to hear the word, the word of God. The Holy One calls our young people to see visions. We come ready to see new visions. The Holy One calls our elders to dream dreams. Come to dream. The Spirit of the Holy One is poured upon all flesh. We come ready to be filled with God's Spirit. Remain standing for him.
Our opening prayer is also printed in your bulletin. God of breath and fire, God of past and future, God of all that is and ever shall be, when Jesus knew he was going to the cross, he promised his disciples that they would not be alone. Jesus assured them that the Holy Spirit would, would remain with them, teaching them how to live and reminding them all he had said. Weeks later, when the day of Pentecost arrived, you poured out your spirit, giving your dis disciples the power to speak in many languages and making tongues of flame that danced above their heads. Today, we ask that you pour your spirit on us, giving us wisdom and courage to live in peace as Jesus' followers. Amen. Okay, come on up. Come on up, guys, for our learning with children. Okay, this morning I wanted to read you a tiny short passage from this book, which this is my personal copy, but it is available in our church's library as well. This is a book called, from, Rich, Richard, from Richard Wagamese called Embers, one of Ojibwe's meditations. Do you guys know what the word meditation means? Have you guys heard that word before? What do you think it means? That's a hard question, I know, especially early in the morning. Anyone want to help them? What do you think meditation, yeah? Chilling, Chilling? okay. So you saw meditation with kind of relaxation? Yeah, so meditation is kind of like, oh, Richard? A thoughtful moment? Yeah, so meditation is kind of like a very peaceful, sometimes people use meditations as prayers, sometimes people use meditation as a way to help them make a decision. So usually when you're meditating, you're sitting in quiet or with peaceful music, and you're thinking about something. You're thinking about a decision. You're, maybe you're thinking about your relationship with God. And so sometimes people will write down their meditation. So I wanted to read a short one from this book today. This one goes, I've been considering the phrase all my relations for some time now. It's hugely important. It's our saving grace in the end. It points to the truth that we are all related that we are all connected, that we all belong to each other. The most important word is all. Not just those who look like me, sing like me, dance like me, speak like me, pray like me, or behave like me. All my relations. That means every person, just as it means every rock, mineral, blade of grass, and creature. We live because everything else does. If we were to choose collectively to live that teaching, the energy of our change of consciousness would heal each of us and heal the planet. So I wanted to share with you guys today as kind of a way of thinking about this and as a way of thinking about everybody around us as we begin June, which is National Indigenous Peoples Month and is also Pride Month. So two different groups of people that we talk about when we talk about welcoming all. Yeah? It's also Men's Mental Health Month, apparently. Great. <laughs> so lots of different peoples we can think about when we're accepting all. So before you guys head off to Sunday school, we'll join the congregation and say the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven. The scripture reading for this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They sat what seemed to be, sorry, they, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. 
Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all those who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears the, them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord among us and between us. Good morning. Good morning. Today is Pentecost Sunday, according to the church. This morning, I chose to speak to the congregation about being filled with the Holy Spirit. But before I get there, I have to make some little confession. I started being a minister in 1975. And all those years from 75 until now, I have been preaching on Pentecost Sunday. And I must say, it has been difficult because I think in my head, I thought that the Spirit will come rushing in all the churches that I preached in and transformation happening. And the Spirit never came as it came in Jerusalem. And I struggled and struggled and struggled to understand how the spirit in Jerusalem is different from the spirit we are receiving. But this morning, I just want to say, last Sunday we had a youth service and we didn't read the lectionary reading for that Sunday. But last Sunday, it was just a Sunday before Ascension Day. And I think in the newsletter, I wrote a little bit about Ascension, what it meant for us. Last Sunday, Jesus had commanded his disciples to remain in Jerusalem and to wait until they were clothed with the Holy Spirit. 
the spirit of power. Only then will the disciples be equipped to preach and to teach. Today, that day that Christ promised happened 2,000 years ago. The disciples were in Jerusalem and the disciples received the Holy Spirit. And the disciples were transformed. They became powerful. Now remember, these were the disciples who had locked themselves in a room, afraid and scared, worried, sick. But today they are in a different place. They are in a room. And they receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And it changed them. It transformed them. It made them powerful. It encouraged them. This is why when we listen to the scriptures, Peter stood up amongst the Jews and the Gentiles and spoke with power about Jesus. This is what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit gives us power and strength to continue witnessing to the gospel. The Holy Spirit encourages us, encourages us, and strengthens us. This morning, we learn that the disciples and everybody else in that Jerusalem received the Holy Spirit and that something miraculous happened. In Jerusalem, there were people from different countries, different walks of life, different ethnicities, who spoke different languages. But then we learn that on the Pentecost day, the disciples were given power to speak the languages of all those people who were there so that they can witness to them, so that they can tell them the wonderful things that God has done for them. And they were able to speak in the tongues of all who were present. Unlike what we read in Genesis in the Tower of Babel, when people were trying to do things for themselves, then God stopped them and confused them and made them speak in different languages so that they couldn't understand one another. But at Pentecost, God reversed the confusion. God made them speak the languages of other people so that people could understand what they're saying. Friends, this is what Pentecost is all about. Pentecost is not about my confusion. This is what Pentecost is all about. That the Spirit can enable us to speak the same language so we can understand one another. 
so we can hear one another. So we can stop the confusion. We live in a world where people don't work together in many days and many times. But in Pentecost, God has promised us new things. God has promised us that we will be able to talk to one another. We will be able to hear one another. We will be able to listen to one another. This is what God has taught us. This is what God has promised us. This is what Christ promised the disciples. Tell them to stay in Jerusalem because if they stayed in Jerusalem, then they will be empowered. They will receive the Spirit. That's the promise. Another promise that Jesus said to the disciples, I will not leave you alone. You ought not be alone. And Jesus is promising us today, we modern Christians, we will not be alone. He will always be with us. And his spirit will always walk with us. This is what God promised. And God keeps the promises. He promised us he will be with us. No matter where you are, no matter what happens to you, he will be with you. No matter you are in your struggles of life, because life is full of struggles. And in the struggles, Christ promised that he will be with us and he will not leave us alone. He will continue to support us. He will continue to stand by us. This is a promise. This is what Christ is promising us. It's a promise. I will not leave you alone. I will not let you struggle and suffer. I will always be there for you. The second thing that Christ is telling us is that God will always be on our side. Isn't it wonderful to know that someone is at your side? Someone is at your back? I learned that very young. I learned that in ministry in South Africa, that God is always on your side and that God will never leave you. I learned that at a young age, and I've always said this in this church, that my life as a young person was horrible. I was a miserable young fellow, suffering from rheumatic fever and heart problems, drinking medication, digoxin every day, to keep my heart beating. I was a miserable, miserable, miserable young fellow. But in that misery, my friends, in that misery, in that misery, I knew that Christ is with me and supporting me. I knew. Even though I didn't know much about Jesus as a teenager. But I knew that someone is always behind me, supporting me. And I always knew that someone is leading me. 
and someone is calling me to be his disciple. And I became his disciple. And I've never changed ever since. So in my miserable life, not only illness, in my miserable life, experiencing imprisonment in South Africa and being tortured in South Africa, I knew, I knew that God has promised that he will not leave us alone. This is why, my friends at Wesley Knox, I strongly believe in the power of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Even though I don't understand, even though I struggle to understand how it happens, I strongly believe. Through faith, I believe in my heart that God will never leave us, that God will always be present. The third thing I want to share, my friends, is that no matter how you take it, no matter how many books you read, there is something that is mysterious about the person of Jesus. When I was in Edmonton, I was a member of the Jesus Seminar, and we studied a lot of Jesus' writings and sayings. And sometimes, in that seminar, I believed some things never happened. Even though I was a student of the Jesus Seminar, there was always something that remained with me. I could not dis deny that Jesus came to this world to be our brother and to help us and to save us. I strongly believe that. I strongly believe that Jesus came and Jesus sent his Holy Spirit to guide us and to strengthen us and to empower us. And I still believe that. I still read books. I still read articles in the Jesus Seminar. I still read those books. But friends, I'm here to say to you, even though I read those books, I still believe that Jesus promised us the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit will be with us, the Holy Spirit will guide us, and that the Holy Spirit will walk with us. So this morning, as we ponder Pentecost, as we ponder Jesus as in mission, can we now accept that the Holy Spirit is there, that the Holy Spirit is a reality, that the Holy Spirit doesn't come as it came in Jerusalem, that the Holy Spirit came to us in our baptism, that the Holy Spirit came as we take communion. That the Holy Spirit is always with us. Now one of the things that marveled me with Wesley Knox, when I look at their bulletin, they talk about moving by the Spirit. What does it mean to be moved by the Spirit? And I thought to myself, Wesley Knox got it right. We are being moved by the Holy Spirit. We are being strengthened by the Holy Spirit. 
We don't have fear because of the Holy Spirit. We struggle because of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit guards us and stands by us. So this morning, can we accept that Jesus showed us a different kind of the kingdom, the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God is coming on earth, that the kingdom of God is here already. The kingdom of God is present with us. Can we this morning accept that? So if we do accept that, that the Holy Spirit is always present with us, then, friends, we are experiencing transformation. We are experiencing the kingdom of God anew. We modern Christians have to experience it. Next Sunday, we have a confirmation service for Oliver Horak. And we have communion too. On that Sunday, next Sunday, we have a congregational meeting where we'll be talking about the new minister for Wesley Knox. I believe in my heart this is the work of the Holy Spirit. So, friends, believe that Jesus came and Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit and this is Pentecost. The Spirit is here and the Spirit is surrounding us. In life, in death, in life beyond death, we are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. share a gratitude that I experienced last Sunday. Last Sunday we had the youth do the service in the church and they did it very well. I just want to thank the leaders of the youth for organizing that for us and also thank Dan 
for leading our youth in this church. I also want to thank that choir, Mysterium, that sang for us. And Karen mentioned that they won the gold. It was exciting. So this morning, I just bring my gratitude to the work that our youth is doing in this congregation. This morning, I have a one piece of letter. The person says, I'm grateful for the silences in our worship. Let us now receive our offering. Holy One, thank you for sending your spirit, the spirit of the risen Christ. Help us to be like earthly, early disciples, praying patiently as we wait for your guidance and power. Fill our hearts and minds with your gifts of faith, hope, and love. May our conversations with people of every language and culture around us witness your grace and mercy. We dedicate ourselves and our offerings to your good purposes in the world through our church's mission by the power of your spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Ever living and ever loving God, we praise you for your loving presence with us. Come, Holy Spirit. Take and transform our societies that broken people might find healing, that lonely people might find love, that bitter people might find peace, that fearful people might find hope. Come, Holy Spirit, take our world's leaders and governments and bring renewal, that communication can be opened, that relationships between hostile people and hostile nations will evaporate. That a hunger for justice addresses the hunger for food felt by so many. Come, Holy Spirit, fill your church that our worship will be ever more pleasing to you that prayers will change minds instead of trying to get you to change yours, that our lives will make a real difference to real people in the world. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our lives with the presence so that no more and more every day all we do and say and hope will be part of act of worship to you and an expression of love for others. This morning, Almighty God, we say, come Holy Spirit and heal the hearts of the families of the Muslims who were killed. We ask that you give them peace of mind. And this morning we also pray for the Muslim community in 
than that. That as they think and celebrate the passing of this family, that you'll always be with them for them. So we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. Friends, may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone who meets you see the face of Christ. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.